Welcome to number 85 of the Daily Watch live podcast on YouTube, on Spotify, wherever you are. We are always with you every Monday, at least, with 20 minutes of Watch Talk. We're always with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think uh, 20 minutes is more than enough for you, probably. But uh, we hope you enjoy and uh, we see the numbers growing of our weekly uh, podcast. So that makes us very happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, also uh, really aware that we have to, yeah, to entertain you with uh, interesting content. This week we do uh, a bit of a recap of the Watches and Wonders week. Yes, Watches and Wonders 2021. We were media partners, so we had, I, I don't think we really had any inside knowledge, but we did talk to a lot of the CEOs, uh, a lot of the representatives of the brands, which was really interesting. Do you think they were all very savvy in terms of uh, communicating digitally this year, Mr. Nick Meyer? Mr. Hagen, I happen to think they are. And of course, I'm, I don't have insights on all the watch brands, but as you mentioned, we uh, were in the lucky position to work with quite a few of them. Yes, we were. Actually, almost half in supporting them on yeah. being being active and being visible on social media. And of course, when a Watches and Wonders, if you compare it to formerly uh, a watch fair, like uh, SIHH, like Basel World, a lot is happening in terms of communications. And that is now shifted to online uh, 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 big time. And I know f uh, from several brands that they took this change very, very seriously in terms of, for instance, having uh, um, uh, dedicated studios built where they do their live sessions, where they do their their info talks, their press uh, uh, conferences, uh, stuff like that. So I happen to think, yes, they are really upping the game of being visible and being communicative online. We have to say that there was actually a live uh, What's This and Wonders that was in Shanghai. No, True. no CEOs were there except Chris from IWC. You know why he was there? A hologram. A hologram. See, oh. IWC they do very well on digital platforms. Yeah. You know, they were on Twitter. They were on LinkedIn. Uh, we did a live session with Chris. Uh, they are everywhere. They are very techy savvy. True, true, and I think they they, and they seem very comfortable. Yeah, in but I think communicating you, like this, you you get comfortable by experience Absolutely. because they it's already for quite some time that they are they want to have the first mover advantage. So whenever yeah. a new platform pops up, like for instance Clubhouse, that is a recent example. They're on it. And we are, of course, as well, because we're sure, a social yeah. media company. So it's in our veins. And also, it's almost our obligation to be there as well. But for a watch brand, they they really seem to like it. No, but they're good at it. And I think they dedicate a lot of staff and hence a lot of time yeah. dwelling into everything digitally. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, just to reflect on how I saw Watches and Wonders, I, I thought it was a very it was heavy on product. See, they couldn't cover themselves behind uh, an incredible million Swiss franc booth or 50 million Swiss franc booth. You needed your product to be your main hero. You couldn't hide behind anything but great quality, solid design, etc. One of the brands that surprised me the most was actually Piaget. Uh, we had the watches here for photography. I must admit, wow, what uh, just outrageously cool watches. The Polo Skeleton, Polo S Skeleton with a micro rotor around less, little less than 20, 30,000 uh, Swiss for the steel version. Beautiful skeletonized movement. I'm going to talk to Chabi about that. Uh, that is tomorrow, which That's is probably tomorrow. a week ago when you listen to this podcast. Uh, Chabi is, uh, is the CEO watch. of Piaget. And it was good to see that a brand which is very known for the ultra flat, the ultra slim watches. They mm -hmm. come out with uh, with the Polo Skeleton. We actually covered it in a podcast uh, a few weeks ago where we showed the watches. We actually had them here in the studio. But again, when I reflect on watches and watches, it was one of my, you know, top novelties, if you like. Yeah, but is that because you had it in your hands? Because that's not completely fair in terms of, of, of if we look at the online presence. Do, we, do you also feel that this 
let's call it this nakedness that mm-hmm. they cannot hide behind the, the the flash and the glamour and the champagne. Sure. It's product only. Yeah. Um, did you get that same effect without having the watch in your hand? I actually, you know, I, I must admit, I wish I had had the Hermes novelties in my hand. I the really the H- wish. Oh, I, I love it. I mean, that they rock design. I mean, Hermes has this... Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> It's a really, I French. really like Hermes. I, I like their watches. I like what they're doing. I like how they work with Vosier. I like how they work with strong design, strong typography. And they don't even go mad. True. And they got the attention. So it's also, if we reflect on, watch, on, on Watches and Wonders, and that's basically also a reflection on the first time ever full-fledged an online fair. Yes, there is, an, there is uh, of course, the Shanghai activity, mm-hmm. but 80%, the majority of the attention was online. So it was sure. a big proof. How are we going to set the standards for having a full season of watch novelties only online? True. And it's definitely the future. And I think once we can go live again, once we can travel, once we can meet again, it's going to be both. I asked the same question to Mr. Emmanuel Perrin, who is the, the president of Watches and Wonders. Mm-hmm. Um, what would happen if all restrictions are gone, if life is back to normal? Yeah. What do we learn from the efforts that we made this year? And he said, of course, we would go back to online because that's also what we hear in every story, in every discussion, every live session you had with the CEO. They always say they're... N- there's nothing uh, beyond uh, shaking your hands, no. having a hug, having a yeah, drink yeah, together, exactly, yeah. the informality. The I think we're going to wait a little bit on the handshakes and the hugs, though. Maybe, maybe we do. Yeah. But but it, it will be clear that next year the balance will be different. Yeah. But I don't think it will be 80 online, offline and 20 online again. I no. think the balance will no. be different for... I think the watch companies, they have been... Uh, extremely generous in their invitations. I think maybe uh, we will see less journalists or writers, if you like. Uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be a more it's going to be a smaller gang, if you like. I think the it's 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 going to be more chosen medias uh, to cover because they know that they will cover it as well live as well as digitally. So I don't think there's going to be a million people visiting a watch fair any longer. I think it's going to be a little more niche in terms of the journalists that will attend. Yeah. And maybe a little bit more uh, of the end consumer because this, I think, this year was a lot about the end consumer. Yeah, but on the other hand, I, I think that a lot of people who listen to the podcast and who are not uh, a journalist, press, or a high-end collector or retailer... They have, of course, a different view. They have the morning show. Every morning there was mm. a show. They yeah. did it pretty well. Yeah, it was very professional, an interview. And they had several sessions that were open to the public. But the majority, the agenda that we had, having six to eight meetings a day on your personal schedule, that is, of course, limited to 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 the stakeholders. So... What will happen? I, th- I would be interested also to learn, and that's basically also where we come in when it comes to social media. How do you share the experience with the potential customer and the fan? I, I think they, they should open, for instance, uh, Basel World. Yeah, it's very hot coffee. Yeah. Uh, Basel World has always been open to the public, except they can't enter the booth. You have to go to the second floor where the, where the smaller brands are, and they will welcome you, and you can have a... You don't, you, you don't have to have a, an appointment or anything. SIH has done that as well. You could buy a ticket, you could go. And I think you could enter the booth, uh, but not behind, not behind. Uh, the reception. So it's still a lot of window shopping, but I think they need to expand the activities, which, mind you, Watches and Wonders was supposed to be an experience for everybody. Yeah, They wanted people to go visit the manufacturers, the retailers. They wanted to have meetings in Geneva City. Uh, they wanted to dedicate everything outside Palexpo. So they really wanted to include the Genevan watch collector, if you like, or just Swiss people hanging out uh, with, uh, with the manufacturers yeah. and yeah. retailers. And of course, that died with COVID. 
that died with COVID. And that is something that, that will pick up soon because I see a bit of a discrepancy. I see on the one hand, uh, the challenge with the demise of, of Basel world that we don't have really have a fair that is open to the general public. On the other hand, we have all brands investing more and more in creating the ultimate boutique experience. Yeah. And then again, where we're discussing IWC because they are front runners here, again. but also Breitling, yeah. they are really working and experimenting in having this ultimate experience, not per se for the professional, but for the buyer or potential buyer. What I really like about the new boutique concepts is actually the night exhibitions. You know, you will walk past the Breitling or an IWC store. You, go, you can actually stand there for a little while and have a look and get a little bit of, oh, yeah, I really want to go there tomorrow. That looks fun. You yeah. know, that whole, that looks fun. Yeah. It's like an, amu an amusement park. Yeah. And I think the watch industry, they, lead, they, they need a little more of that. That looks fun. That looks fun. I think you're mentioning hologram. Yeah, the hologram with Chris Grenier's uh, hair from uh, IWC. He was, he was there in Shanghai. He was... I believe he was actually taking questions as a hologram. But imagine that next year in uh, Watches and Wonders that a brand could involve all the boutiques as well. If you have holograms, you can put the, your your novelty, the watch that you just launched, you can put it everywhere. Yeah, probably. That, that's like You can have Michael Jackson there if you like. You can have Michael Jackson, <laughs> but I'm not sure if I would buy a watch from Michael Jackson. But oh, come <laughs> on. You bought a Pepsi, didn't I you? I bought a Pepsi. Yeah, oh, true that. Yes, true that. Did. He was a Pepsi guy. No, but I think uh, I, 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 I'm very positive about the creativity and about the ambition, especially since we recently discussed the numbers yeah. that are going up, the export numbers. Sure. So brands will also have more ambition and more opportunity to invest True. and investing is of course in the products well we we assume that will be right but also in the experience online versus online i and think offline. so absolutely I, i think you're very much true and right and i can't wait well i can't wait to see you know i, I have friends in the watch industry been, been working in this industry for so long i miss my friends i miss my buddies i miss yeah. lex stork who just joined ah. fratello by the way did i tell yeah, you yeah i know i know i know good man lex yeah lex yeah, is yeah, cool yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I miss these guys because you have spent so much time, so many days and weeks and months. I miss the schnitzel dinners. Yeah, well, you know, definitely not vegetarian, Mr. Meyer. Uh, no, we miss the company. We <laughs> miss the reflections. We miss hanging out with the independent uh, uh, watch brands, the Grönefeld brothers, you know, uh, going to Dubai and, and, and meeting uh, Mr. Schuon. Well, Mr. Schuon, that is Mr. Rolex Schuon. Yeah. But uh, let's leave it like that. Um, so... We miss all that, but with that said, they have done extremely well. They did what they needed to do, uh, what is some wonders. Yeah. I think Emmanuel can be very proud yeah. uh, of his company uh, and how they performed. They will sophisticate again for 2022. We don't know if that's going to be a physical fear back then, but it's going to be something different. And definitely, they know both platforms to communicate within. Yeah, and, and and so so it's going to be a lot more appreciated. It's not like Zoom and Team was anything strange to us. Already, our companies, our own companies, we were communicating like that for quite a while. We live by Zoom. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, there's one thing, and that that is something that might be a bit of a dilemma. Also, I noticed that this year, compare in in comparison to to the Watches and Wonders platform, is that the activity is more split than when you have a physical fair. When you have a physical fair, for instance, Basel World or SIHH. The organization has the, the, the fundament, the structure, where within that structure, brands perform. They present, they have their booth, they have everything. True. Now it is uh, decentralized. Yeah. So you have the Watches and Wonders platform, True. but the brands also have their own platforms where they launch their novelties, where they do their promotional stuff. So that is a dilemma, the decentralization that is a given. They have to deal with that in the future. Yeah. Um, and, and Watches and Wonders has to prove their existence and their, uh, uh, well, their, their central, being the centerpiece, center yeah. point in uh, uh, combining that. Let me just ask you, dear viewers and listeners, uh, where did you get your news from during Watches and Wonders? Um, 
And uh, which favorites did you have uh, from the novelties that we saw this year? There was about 39 or 38 exhibiting brands. So that's, that's quite a few watch brands to choose from. So which were your favorites? Where did you get your news from? Which platform? Was it Instagram, Twitter, Hodinky? Where did you get it from? I would be really interested to see how did you see Watches and Wonders 2021? How do you think they performed? How do you think the brands performed? And were you able to follow it as a consumer, as a potential client of said brands? You know what? We can put a poll on dailywatch.co. If you go to dailywatch.co, I will ma- make sure that we do a poll. There you can give direct answer to Christian's question. Yeah. Was it on social media? Was mm. it on Daily Watch? Was it on the, on, the, on the website of the brand? Was it at your uh, favorite retailer? We would love to know. And it's dailywatch.co, yeah. not com, yeah. dot co, co. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you, if, uh, to, to, to summarize, if you could give one advice to the Watches and Wonders organization for next year, what would it be? Absolutely. And uh, also, what do you miss from our guys, our end? Oh, no, I'm asking you. Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. Ask that question again. What if you could? What would be your advice, your one advice to the Watches and Wonders organization for next year? Some of the brands need to be a little bit prepared for live sessions, for instance. Uh, they need to check their techies uh, beforehand. See, of course, it has been challenged as a lot of people weren't actually sitting together due to COVID. So that was the biggest challenge this year. They didn't have their... PA next to them. They didn't have a secretary. They didn't have five helping hands uh, to help with the technique. uh, Probably on different different locations. Yes, they went different locations. That did actually challenge a lot. We're hoping that COVID is not as dominant in 2022, so they can actually sit at the manufacturer, at the retailer, in their normal office, with their staff around them that will help them with any technical glitches. That was a challenge this year. But I think they, they still performed very well. So, so I'm not asking them to do better. I'm just asking COVID to be less dominant in 2022 in order to work with your staff. Let's, uh, let's aim at that. I think, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, agree more. I think it's about... Cheers! <laughs> it's about facilitating. Yeah. I think Watches and Wonders is a platform and they did tremendously well yeah. in visualizing, in giving the atmosphere. For the first time in more than a year, I really had the fair vibes. <laughs> also because we were sitting together sure, exactly. in our own uh, war room, yeah, yeah. but also because of how Watches and Wonders facilitated the panel talks, the the, the, the talk with Mike Horn and Jean-Marc Pontreux. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Schoifler. Absolutely. That, that really adds up. It's not only presenting a watch, it's also the whole ecosystem. And they did uh, uh, a pretty good job. I could follow oh, I you so. that maybe Absolutely. in terms of facilitating, they have a use advantage that, that the majority of the customers, the brands are in the same country. Yeah. So maybe a technical team on the run that goes everywhere. Uh, but to, next year will be completely different, I guess. It will, hopefully. And I, everybody needs to evolve. Everybody needs to learn. And I think that everybody learned a lot compared to 2020. Sure. I was missing some of my colleagues out there, though. There was not a lot of live sessions uh, which dominated the social media picture in 2020. Uh, 2021 was a little quiet. Yeah, I think uh, Daily Watch did by far the most live sessions. I think so too. But and we will continue with that because we really believe in the live session as 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 being an important component in in brand communication. Yeah. So keep following us on uh, all available channels. Remember to subscribe, uh, write your thoughts, share your thoughts uh, just below this YouTube video. Sorry about that if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcast. Uh, but share your thoughts. We read all of the comments and we uh, tend to answer many of them as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. See you next week. Bye-bye.